Hello students, your instructor here, John Mandula, with another screencast. This one about setting up a multi-page document like for a newsletter um, or anything similar to that. So first things first, in Illustrator, if you're going to use Illustrator, I will go to File, New, and there are just going to be some different options here that will load up so you can see how to get it going. So here we are uh, at the new document dialog. So the number of artboards, let's say I want a four page document, I would just set this to four. And you have a bunch of options over here. These are basically just how your artboards are going to be arranged. Um, so they have these little things here. So again, these things right here are just how they're arranged. So if I click on this one, <coughs> they'll basically be arranged in one stripe or one row going across. And then the width and height is how big each artboard is. So let's just say I do 8.5 by 11 inches. That's fine. The bleed, um, the bleed is the area that if this would be professionally printed and you want stuff to actually go all the way to the edge, not just be close to it, you would have to have your colors and graphics go past the edge a little bit. That's what the bleed is, the, the amount. And then it would get trimmed down in a printer. So in our case, we're not going to have a bleed. This probably would be something that would be printed. Well, I guess we could have a bleed. So let's just say we did a quarter inch bleed. That's fine like that. CMYK 300. Good, and I'll hit OK. And what's to do is you'll see four artboards, and they'll act basically like four pages. Um, so the black, again, that's the edge of your page. The red around each one, that's the bleed. So again, if you have any graphics or color fields, you know, like squares or circles, whatever that you want to go to the edge, have it go to the red, not the black. Now, if you have text, uh, especially if you have text, not only are you going to want to keep it inside the black edge, but you're going to keep it inside quite a bit from the black edge. So one way to do that is if I go to view and I go to show rulers, you can see I get rulers top and left, and I'm going to zoom in here, control plus or command plus a few times. Sorry about that, that was my daughter listening to a cartoon. So okay, here we go. So you see here, I've, you know, every two inches is a mark and every one inch. So what I can do is just take this and if I hold shift while I drag from the rulers I actually snap to one of these points. So let's say I do this would be half a inch right there and I can do it this way too. So this blue line, it might be hard to see, it's a kind of a blue or cyan color. That's going to be saying that this is half inch inside the black edge. So once again this blue or cyan or whatever color it's going to be for you um, my preference is set to cyan, but yours might be a bluish or greenish color. This is uh, as close to the edge as I would want any text or graphics. Well, any text to get graphics, you know, if it's a photo that you might intentionally want it to bleed off the edge. Um, otherwise, if you really want it to be red and seen, you know, to be red, you want to keep it inside the blue area. The black is the edge of the page, so that's, you know, just the edge of the page. It's called the trim. And then the red is the bleed area. So you have any, like a, you know, let's say I have a, I don't know, a box of light green or whatever, and I want it to bleed off the edge. You know, I'll go something like that. That way, it'll actually go up to and beyond the top and left of the document. But again, any text, you definitely want to stay inside the blue area. And then one thing you always want to do whenever I work with guides is I go to View Guides Lock Guides. And the reason for that is, once I've set my guides in place, I don't want to actually be able to manipulate them. I want to just leave them there. They're just a guide to let me know where to stay with my materials. So anyways, you know, I can make, you see that the horizontal guidelines have gone across all of them. I can make more vertical guidelines as I see fit. Another subtle thing, you see how this trim edge is black and these are kind of grayed out? That's because I'm in this artboard. If I click on this one, now I'm in this artboard. So that's how you save, um, or that's how you can make sure that you know which artboard you're in as you're working. And remember, you want to use consistent fonts and colors and even types of images throughout your newsletter. Okay, the first one's probably going to be, you know, the cover, so to speak. But really, the only difference in the cover is that the top area, there might be some masthead, they call it, um, which has the title, maybe the issue number, the date, you know, whether your newsletter is weekly or biweekly or whether it's monthly, it could be quarterly, so it might say like spring instead of a specific month, things like that. Stay tuned for another tutorial coming up.